You know how Twin Flame Separation is just so much fun? Yeah, we all love the chaos, the drama, the confusion, or maybe not. So we're going to unpack things with five techniques that are going to make the process smoother so that you can step back into reunion once again. <sighs> so if you're already in separation, we've broken this down into two categories. The first category is you're communicating, and the second category is that you're so I'll start with the you're not communicating category first. So if you're not communicating with your twin flame or the person you believe to be your twin flame, there's actually an opportunity here. This is the time to really call your energy in and to love up on yourself. Because when we fall in love with ourselves, we can actually mirror and align with that twin flame energy. So I know when I found myself solo, I pampered myself, I called girlfriends, I fell in love with old hobbies that I'd kind of forgotten about. I did a lot of self-pleasuring, if you know what I'm talking about. And my life ended up being so juicy, ripe, and full that my beloved was like, can I get up in there, please? If you are in communication with the person you believe to be your twin flame, then this is an ideal time to create a solid masculine structure so that you can have your feminine watery emotions. Drama does need to come out. There's something that is not working. So creating a solid container so you can navigate through this is super, super helpful. And we'll give you some tips on how to do that in just a moment. Step number one is seek the truth. Get really curious about your partner and know that the truth will set you both free. This can be really painful, especially for us ladies. Our fear oftentimes, at least the divine feminine number one fear, is being abandoned. It's terrifying thinking that, oh my God, this might not work out. This is my twin flame after all. Like sometimes we're like, this is my one true ticket to true love. And thinking about like the truth could point us somewhere ugly, like, oh, there could be a, a lifelong separation that is really painful. Like we go into all these dark stories. So what we want to do is actually get out of that dark field and say, universe, I trust you. I know a beautiful thing is coming and I know this is happening for a reason. I know the truth is going to set us both free and we may come back together really soon or something even better might happen. But really savor the truth because the truth is really beautiful and that was what we experienced. And the truth will always give you what you need for your highest good. Step number two, do a fear detox. So what we did with this is we both had a lot of fears coming up around potentially taking a break or separating. Uh, we had fears that Amanda was having attraction towards another guy. It was really shocking for us. I was also afraid to lose you. Yeah, she was afraid to. Either way that. I went. <laughs> yeah. So what we decided was to go onto the beach. We were living our dreams. We were living on the beach at that time. It was amazing. Took a beautiful walk. Uh, we took a beautiful long walk. We took as much time as we needed. And we just went back and forth where uh, one person gets to talk for five minutes and the other person just listens and really holds a neutral safe space meaning we're not going to react to what they're saying we're not going to judge them for what they're saying uh, we're not going to criticize them we're just literally going to be neutral and just listen so like we just shared our fears that were coming up i think i was afraid of this was like seven years ago but i think i was afraid of losing amanda obviously of being single and not being able to find another partner and hearing his fears, I was like, oh, that's so beautiful, you know, like coming from that place of seeking truth instead of going into that kind of nasty ego mind where I would have like picked him apart and been like, he's not the guy that, you know, I want. I'm looking for a king. He's so insecure. Instead, I was like really feeling that courage in you to share and be vulnerable. And I just felt so loving mm -hmm. towards you. So in that, that truth sharing in our conversation, it was just like... I felt like a deeper level of friendship and connection and com really compassion. And that compassion served me because it was something that I had never really given myself. So in giving it to Jack, I gave it to myself and then I started to realize that I was being a little ridiculous, like thinking about sacrificing this, this relationship. So yeah, he hooked me by, by being vulnerable mm. and sharing his truth. I know how hard it is and how confusing it is. You want to know if this person's your twin flame or not. And if it's too soon, we don't want to jump the gun. So we've created a 22 twin flame signs of reunion checklist. This is so powerful. 
this downloadable checklist. It's like a cheat sheet to give you the blueprint of what to look for in your twin flame union, what to strive for. It'll give you some ideas on whether or not this person is the one or not. And if they're not there yet, then maybe both of y'all will be stepping up during this separation. So click the link below and get the free PDF delivered to your inbox right now. Step number three is time container. So every body of water, you can think of that as the feminine, needs a container. A lot of people, if they don't create a time container, then just things are just kind of left open for eternity. And so women may find themselves five years later still wondering, waiting, wishing for their twin flame, this guy that had this incredible connection with. So what we did is we created a an amount of time that felt good for the both of us, which was one month, and we both agreed on that. And that amount of time felt good for us to be able to separate in a healthy way where we could both connect back to ourselves, figure out what we really want, find that, that happiness within ourselves, that inner peace, and then come back together after a month. So we felt a month was enough time to do that. And you can kind of pace the pain. You know that the separation is going to be somewhat painful, but if you're like, okay, we're just going to focus on this next month or three months or year or whatever it is for you, it's like you can really put all of your intention and attention on that time versus that murky, like letting them in and out of your life and getting wishful and hopeful and then going down into the darkness. Like this is really pure and clean and important for your relationship. Step four is communication agreements. So do you both think it would be healthy during that period of time to be texting each other back and forth, to be calling each other? For us, we said, let's stop the calls, no texting, no social media, no emailing each other for one month so that we can really connect back to ourselves and figure out what we really want. Because he was just so yummy and it was just so tempting to want to pop open my messenger and chat him up and you will have those moments where you have to grab your hand and actually I think I I might have cheated and in a moment of need I called him up and actually it was really sweet he was supportive I was having a really bad time and and that cheating moment actually taught me like okay I really do value this person but don't cheat don't do what I did create that that container of are you going to communicate or not and it will create that solid space so then step number five is what are the dating agreements? Can you hook up with other people? Can you kiss other people? Can, can you, you talk to other date? people? Yeah, and so what we did was just, uh, I think we basically just did no sex basically. With um, other people? Yeah. Or each other? <laughs> we we could them. date if we wanted to, but we didn't really end up doing that. And that was really my truth. I wanted to be able to date, to be able to explore this attraction with this person, which I did pursue, I had a phone call. It was clearly not in alignment, it didn't work out. It was such a great freedom for me that Jack gave me. So I didn't have that lingering thought in the back of my mind that like, oh, he trapped me and he didn't let me express myself. And he did. And like, I got really clear. It's like, oh, that was such a man illusion. It was an illusion. And it called my energy back into present time. This worked well, I think, because no woman or no person in general wants to be trapped in a relationship. And I felt that intuitively. I knew Amanda needed to have her freedom. Um, she needed the freedom to discover herself and what she wants so that she could actually come back and choose me rather than feeling like she was trapped in a relationship with me. Yes, and I'll have to do some videos about how I got clear of that I'm trapped in a relationship mindset because I did have the first year in our relationship, it was really scary. And I know a lot of people, a lot of our clients, our fans struggle with this. And I'm no longer trapped. I'm so blessed to be with this man. And we have a fiery, deep connection on all levels. So know that you can get through it. And I have a funny story to share about the guy that I pursued. But first, I'm going to remind you to click below the 22 Twin Flame Signs of Reunion checklist, that amazing cheat sheet that is like a surefire litmus test to tell if they're the one or not. It at least will give you some really huge clues. All right, so it was really funny because we lived together and moved in together and we got engaged and we lived in San Diego for a couple of years after our separation. Before we left San Diego, my last night there I went out with some girlfriends it was a goodbye night goodbye party for me and there was one woman that I didn't know at the party I said yeah she could come and 
she ended up being a woman that had dated the guy that I'd had a huge crush on. Somehow it came up in conversation. She said his name, he had a very unique name. And she's like, oh, I feel so free. I broke up with him, you know, he's really not very good in bed. And it just was so funny. My soul was just giggling because, and, and bless him, he probably is very wonderful. It just wasn't the right fit for her. But it was like a message for me to be like, all right, Amanda, you're so ridiculous. You were, you were so ridiculous back then to even challenge and um, worry about your choice. I have an amazing partner. We have the spark and there's no regrets to live with. So thank you universe for that crazy synchronicity. Thanks for watching. Namaste. Namaste.